Last week we heard in the Gospel about how Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish and, and multiplied them so that there was food enough for 5,000 men and then the women and the children. And then he uh, had 12 wicker baskets full left over after everyone had eaten their fill. This incredible gift. And then after that, he goes up on the mountain because he doesn't want them to try to make him king because they don't understand what that kingship is, that is Christ. And then after they all go, he walks on the water. And we don't hear this in the Gospel um, in at Mass, but it is part of the Gospel of John. He walks across the water and meets the disciples as they're in their storm. Well, here's where we pick up. The, the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there. So they're saying, how did he, where, where, where did they go? So they go across and they say, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus is saying, <laughs> would that you were looking for me for the right reasons. You're looking for me not because you saw signs, not because of miracles, not because you were seeking the heart of God. You're looking for me because I fed you. Because your stomachs got filled. Don't work for the food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life. He's drawing out a true hunger within them. He looks and says, okay, yes, there's this natural hunger, but you're trying to fill that natural hunger with something else. Don't we do that too often? We try to fill that natural hunger with something else. It's, it's, it's that movement within us that, you know, we go and we eat an Oreo or two, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But then after we're not hungry anymore, we're still eating. And we eat a whole box of Oreos. Even though we're not really hungry. But there's something there. Then we get sick. Maybe that's just me. But, so, the Lord is saying, no, what, what you're trying to fill there is not working out. Don't work for the food that perishes. That's leaving you empty. I was, some of you know, I was at Soul Fest uh, this past weekend, running, uh, helping to run the vocation table up there. And one of the teenagers was coming out from one of the booths, and he had this, this basket of stuff. I wasn't sure exactly what they were. They were definitely deep fried. And he says, deep fried Oreos. You want one? No, I think I'll pass. But, but we look for things to fill us up. And he says, no, look for something deeper. And then they say, well, well, okay, then how can we accomplish the works of God? How can we look for that something that's deeper? It says, okay, you're on the way. You're on the way. This is the work of God that you believe in the one he sent. And belief is not just saying, okay, I have an intellectual assent that Jesus is God and therefore he is part of the Trinity, that he became man and all that stuff. No, it's more. That belief that is in the Jewish understanding, the people that were surrounding Jesus, is a belief of trust. That I, I not only believe with my mind, but I entrust my life. It shows in my actions and how I give myself. That I believe in the one he sent. I give my life over to this. And then, and then they ask, well, okay, if you want us to believe in you, what sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert. And I can hear it. Even 2,000 years ago, it's still echoing throughout the centuries that I can hear the divine face palm. <laughs> and it's like, I can hear Jesus saying to himself, Really? Really? Yesterday, I just fed the multitude with five loaves and two fish. It was only the day before. They came looking for him because of that very thing. And they're saying, show us a sign? <laughs> really? What more do you want? <laughs> Dumb as a bag of hammers. I don't know. Okay. And so Jesus is trying to get them. He's drawing them along. Oh, no, no. I, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave them bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread that got, of God, that is, which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. 
And then they say, give us this bread always. Give us this bread that will fill our hunger. He's finally moved them to that point where they're able to say, I want this. They may not understand what it is. They may not have a full grasp, they, but they want it. They're longing for it. They know that there is this hunger deep within them. And it's not satisfied no matter how many deep fried Oreos they eat. There is this longing and this hunger. And Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. And this is the beginning of what we call the Bread of Life Discourse. And next week, this, first, this last verse will be the first verse of next week's Gospel. And then later we'll hear Jesus say again, I am the Bread of Life. So over the next four, five, six weeks, we'll be hearing from this Bread of Life Discourse about how Jesus gives us Himself. He says, I am the bread of life. You see, a lot of times we look at Catholicism as what one theologian would call the starvation diet. And what do I mean by that? Where God says to us, no! Anything that's fun, you better not do that. Cut it out! Anything that you don't like to do, <laughs> like maybe sitting for an hour on a hard wooden bench, having to listen to Father Vaughn go on and on and on, that's what I'm going to make you do if you want to get to heaven. There. <laughs> that's, that's not God. That's, that's a wrong comprehension of Catholicism, even if it is a right comprehension of Father Vaughn. <laughs> But so he's, this starvation, it's like we have to say no to all of our desires. Everything we want, we have to say no to. And that's the image of the starvation diet that we very often think is Catholicism, which it's not. The, the world then offers us the junk food diet, the, the, the fast food diet. They say, it's not very nourishing, but boy, it makes you feel good at first. Now, I don't know about you. But if I'm given the choice between starvation and fast food, I'm going to go for the fast food. Even though it's not going to fill me up, even though it's going to still leave me empty afterwards, even though it's not going to give me nourishment, at least I won't be starving. And when we see in the world that those seem to be the only two options that we have, of course people are going to go for the junk food. But at the end of the junk food, at the end of the fast food meal, they say with Bono, And I still haven't found what I'm looking for. But Jesus says, there is a feast that corresponds with your hunger. And that feast is Him. I am the bread of life. That deep ache that you're looking to fill. He says, I am the one who can fill it. That deep longing that you have in your heart to love and to be loved. He is the one true lover who can fulfill our needs and our desires. That loneliness that we experience, He is that companion who will never abandon us and understands us perfectly. He is the one, He is the feast that corresponds with our deepest hunger. But too infrequently do we allow ourselves to go from the immediate hunger and filling it with junk food to allowing ourselves to experiencing our hunger and saying, Jesus, come and fill me up. Jesus, be the satisfaction I need, the fulfillment of all my desires. This day, as we come and allow God to feed us with His Word, and with His very body and blood, 
Let us allow Him, let us beg Him to come and be the satisfaction we need, to fill our hunger, to be the bread of life, so that we may no longer hunger, that we may no longer thirst.